Hi, everyone. Welcome to Walk Worthy. I'm Erin. And I'm Lindsay. And today we are going to be discussing um, a passage. We don't really have like a topic. We'll get to what our topic is. Yes. But um, we're going to be pulling from Luke 17. And this was, I think we came up with this because I read it and I was like, I've never seen this passage in the Bible. <laughs> Not that I like have the Bible memorized, but it's in Luke. Yeah. You know? And so it's like, surely I've read Luke a few times and it really struck me when I read it. So anyway. Maybe it will strike somebody else. So Luke 17, we're going to start in verse 7 uh, through 10. It says, Which of you, having a slave plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, come immediately and sit down to eat? But will he not say to him, prepare something for me to eat and properly clothe yourself and serve me while I eat and drink and afterward you may eat and drink? He does not thank the slave because he did the things which were commanded, does he? So you too, when you do all the things which are commanded, you say, we are unworthy slaves. We have done only that which we ought to have done. So at first read, this passage sounds a little harsh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why I was like, huh? Um, so maybe someone else was singing the same thing. It just seems like. I don't know. The word slave probably throws us a little bit Mm -hmm. in our culture. Mm -hmm. Um, But also then it's like, all right, you did your work. Now come in and feed me. Yeah. (laughs) But it seems like odd. But then, okay, we'll we'll break it down. We'll break it down. We'll break it down. Well, and I do feel like it's probably important to say sometimes people read things in scripture and think that this is God saying, hey, slavery is ordained and should happen. Right. It's not that. Sometimes there are things that are descriptive of the culture that is happening, not mm-hmm. necessarily God saying, hey, here's how things should go. So, yes, it's descriptive, not prescriptive. Yes. That's I heard way someone to say else it. say that. I didn't make it up. But it's good. Yeah. That's right. Passing it along. There we go. <laughs> so he is speaking to a culture, though, that slavery would have been very easily understood because the Roman Empire had, I think it was maybe, okay, listen, don't quote me on this. I didn't look it up. I should have. I didn't. It might have been like know, so I will believe a third you. or a half. It was a lot. I mean, even two thirds. I can't remember. It was like a big number of slaves. Yeah. I'm, and this is getting bigger every time. Maybe it was 90%. We don't yeah, know. 95, 99.9%. <laughs> yeah, 95, 99.9%. <laughs> but it was a large portion of, I remember reading it and thinking, that's a lot of people yeah. Like that were, so this was very much a culture of, you know, sometimes people would become a slave because they were in debt or mm-hmm. for various reasons. Mm-hmm. It was safety and security for their family. Right. They knew they had employment. And in a good scenario, which, you know, obviously we would hope this is, the slave was kept like family in the Mm -hmm. home. They're fed. And so it was part of employment that they lived at the house. So So in some ways, it was a blessing to be a slave in that culture. If you had had a kind master master, and things like that, it was knowing that you would be taken care of. Yes. Because you also see in scripture day laborers that every single day had the insecurity of not having a job. So every day they had to go out and they hoped someone would hire them for the day. Mm -hmm. And if not, then you had no food, you didn't eat, you had no money. Right. So it was in that case, if you were in one of those two classes, you're better off to be with an actual family that Mm -hmm. would care for you. Right. And with that comes an expectation of what your job is, which I think is what we see in these verses. Like there's an expectation placed on the slave. Yes. Like this is what your job is during the day. And then this is what your job is at night. These are your responsibilities. And so it's basically saying like, do what you're expected to do. Right. (laughs) And you're not going to come in if, if you're a slave and this is part of the culture and this is part of what you do, then you're not also getting paid and rewarded on top of of whatever else like this is this is just your normal expectation of work right so so do that get it done yeah exactly <laughs> um yeah and it's just kind of saying like this is the bare minimum this is how it is yeah i guess <laughs> yeah yeah it's so it's not like you know it's it's crazy to think that that what then the master's indebted to him for doing his work or right. owes him something extra because he did what was expected of him to do i mean mm-hmm. so you kind of read that and it's like What? Like, now you have to feed? Like, no, this is part of your job. Yeah, this is, yeah, it would just be, it seems odd to us because most of us don't work in that way. But Mm -hmm. it would be like, oh, you're, you work at McDonald's and you were on the drive-thru for eight hours. Like, that's what you do. That's the expectation. That's what you are to get paid for. And so there's not like, it's not like, I can't believe they asked me to do this. Right. Like. What's your job? Yeah. So, anyway. Or, yeah, I mean, or if you want to pull it to corporate America even, let's say you have a, a morning full of meetings and then your boss is like, okay, now do your emails. Mm-hmm. Like, ugh, what? <laughs> I, I'm not off. Exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. No, do your emails. This is part of the job. Yes, part of the job. All right. So, 
drawing the spiritual parallel because Jesus is always talking. Yeah, clearly he's not talking about like actually <laughs> right. how they should be. Exactly. So when he's talking to his disciples, which is important to note, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but um, later in scripture, it talks about us having been bought with a price, mm-hmm. that we were slaves to sin, and then we are redeemed. And then it talks about us being, as, as we were slaves to sin, so be slaves to righteousness. Mm-hmm. So we now have a new master, so to speak. So he draws, so this is a very good spiritual parallel for us. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which we can, you know, we often, I think, I was thinking through this passage before, I think instead of realizing our position before the Lord once we have been bought by him, myself, and it's interesting that we're doing this topic because even over the past like couple months, I've been realizing like my entitlement. Like Mm. I think, I think that's a lot of what this scripture is talking about is our entitlement before the Lord. Like we are his and we are supposed to be surrendered to him, but we, I often, you know, I'm just like, I'm going to God when I need something. Mm. Like he's, I think um, Wes has referenced him as like a genie in a bottle. You know, mm. we, we like go to God, like, please help me with this. Please help me with yeah. this. And then the rest of our day, like doing whatever we want to do. Mm-hmm. I think we often um, have that entitlement and don't really recognize like that we are unworthy slaves before the Lord, mm-hmm. that we are only able to have any hope or anything because he has bought us, because he has redeemed us. Yes, And so... Um, we have to be surrendered to him, not expecting him to like surrender to our every beck right. and call. Like, <laughs> I I really like have noticed that in myself. Like, oh my gosh, like, are you even like seeking what God wants you to do today? Or are you just like asking him to like help me with this, help me with that? So, and to to be, I mean, a slave. It is a good parallel because a slave did whatever his master wanted mm-hmm. he was at the behest of his master whatever command whatever he needed where wherever he wanted him to go whatever he wanted him to do maybe one day it changed from day to day some days it might have been a good job some days it might have been a terrible job mm-hmm. but it didn't matter mm-hmm. he he did whatever he was asked to do and i don't know that we are any of us quite as surrendered as we think we are oh yeah absolutely not <laughs> absolutely not no because and you talk about entitlement like because for me in particular, because I have such a limited amount of time, it mm-hmm. is, I, there's a lot in my life, which is fine. And I know everyone has a lot. It's not like I'm special. But for me in particular, the biggest thing that I get irritated about is my time. Mm-hmm. So if someone's wasting my time or I had an idea of what was going to happen with my time and then something different happens with it and I get a little grumpy, mm-hmm. instead of recognizing this is, this is the day that the Lord has made, this yeah. is you are ordained to be in it and whatever crosses your path. You need to just see as another one of your duties that the Lord has handed to you to do, mm-hmm. you know? Well, and recognize that, like, it's his day. It's not ours. It's right. not our work. It's so not hard. our, yeah, like, it's his. And obviously there are things that need to be done. It's not like we should just sit and be like, okay, God, what should I do next? Right. Like, do your thing. Mm-hmm. But just being aware that, like, he has the right to yeah. interrupt any of that, to, you know, ask us to do something different, whatever that is, we need to recognize like we're his. Mm -hmm. And not that I was going to say he's not ours, but I mean, I mean, we always say like, I am yours and you're mine. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. I'm thinking deeply about that now, but like he, he's not at our like will, we're at his. Yeah. He doesn't serve us. We serve him. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So surrender is a big deal, but then also it begs the question as slaves of Christ, are we doing the work at all? Right. Like, are you even employed in the service of the king? Are mm-hmm. you doing the things that you're supposed to be doing? You know, are you serving? Are you involved? Are you preaching the gospel? Mm-hmm. Because there are things that we are told to do. Yes. It's not like we're waiting on him to tell us what to do. Right. <laughs> like, he already told us. Yeah. Are we even taking part in those things, let alone allowing him to have free reign right. over the rest? Right. Right. I mean, right. Have you been baptized? Communion's a thing we're supposed to do. Um, preach, baptize, disciple. That's the Great Commission. Mm-hmm. You know. So, are we even engaged in the work at all? Mm-hmm. Denying ourselves, fleeing from sin, like right. confessing our sin, <laughs> repenting. Yes. Trying, you know, all those things. Or are we just kind of like, well, I'm doing what yeah. I want. Yep. And like, there's always going to be more that he calls us to. Like, mm-hmm. you know, they did their job during the day, and then they came home, and it was like, this is your job now. Like, mm-hmm. it's not. Um, there's always going to be more to be done. Right. He's always going to be calling us to more. We don't spiritually retire. Right. Saying. So true. <laughs> or like, I did a lot this week. I know. So I'm checked out on that. 
No, and and there are, are times where you might get a phone call or an appointment or some other task where you're like, oh, mm-hmm. but we're still called with wisdom, obviously, but we're For still sure. called to do to continue to do the work, mm-hmm. you know, even like, if it's inconvenient. Even yes, it's mm-hmm. not like like you said. I haven't reached my quota this week. Like if there's the extra thing, then sometimes there's the extra thing, and you have to right. still do it. Exactly, exactly. Sons and Christ, like with joy and with gratitude that yes. because really like the verse like we have been bought with a price he mm-hmm. gave his life for us we can do the next thing mm-hmm. for him you know we like forget the sacrifice that he made so we're not willing to make the sacrifices for him yes we kind of i think it just kind of we get used to it we get used to the gospel we get used to being saved and yeah. being redeemed and it we forget what our response to that should be which is just praise and gratitude mm-hmm. and thankfulness and our service and Jesus paid it all to him I owe. Yeah. And I think we forget that. Yeah. And that's why – so the end part of that where it talks about us being unworthy slaves, it, it can initially be a bit uh, startling. Mm-hmm. I remember actually coming across this – I'm very distinctly remembering this in college. I read this and was like, wow, that really puts in perspective – none of us are cool Mm -hmm. none of us are great none of us are doing awesome work Mm -hmm. you know um i was kind of studying for this and someone had said you know this is like the little kid that's at the playground that's like watch me get on the slide watch me go up the stairs and and you're like cool Cool. (laughs) every kid here has done the same thing like you're my fifth kid i've seen this at like everybody's (laughs) learned to swing you know right right. obviously you don't say that because you're not a terrible parent for sure but it's not impressive and we often as disciples we're so impressed with ourselves so true and the disciples themselves as they're walking with the messiah are asking well who do you but who's the greatest of us yeah and that is in all of us Mm -hmm. that whole that sentiment of feeling like well i'm a really good disciple yeah and he's like you're just an unworthy slave that's done their duty calm down and i think that's why when we read well myself when i read it i was like you're kind of like cut by it a little bit because you're like what (laughs) <laughs> like no, I'm like a great Christian, right? <laughs> Main character energy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, none of us are the main character. Exactly. <laughs> it's so true, though. But we are in our own eyes, mm-hmm. in our own lives. Like it's all about me, right? Yeah. So you are like that reveals the pride in us. Like if you, if you me when you're like (laughs) cut by that like i'm an unworthy slave it's like oh like yeah i need to like take myself down a couple notches i was thinking that verse like don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to Mm -hmm. think like because you're nothing yeah like you're nothing in comparison to who jesus is no and it doesn't matter how much you do for the kingdom wes and i'll talk about this sometimes because it's so crazy people will get a little bit of you know it's god is so incredibly gracious to use wretches like us Mm -hmm. to be employed in his kingdom Mm -hmm. he his power works through us we get to see lives changed people saved Mm -hmm. the power of god fall at different times Mm -hmm. amazing blessing and you get a little bit of that and that can be so toxic because people begin to internalize that and think it has something to do with themselves that i i've called the fire down i i'm such a great disciple i'm making such an impact and Mm -hmm. it's just you know, we'll talk about, we'll say like literally no one's cool and everybody's replaceable. Like yeah. every single person's replaceable. Even Jesus himself didn't stay like, I mean, like if Christ didn't stay to disciple everyone himself, but replaced himself with disciples, like who do I think that I, like yeah. I'm not replaceable here? Right. Like he needs me somehow. Right. Like he didn't even keep himself here on earth. Yeah. <laughs> so or I think it's a very healthy thing to realize every single one of us is replaceable. Mm-hmm. God doesn't need us, and nobody's cool but Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And those are hard things. <laughs> They're hard things. But healthy things. Yeah, and great. And freeing things, too. For really. sure. Honestly, yeah. Because if you think that you're the guy, like, yes. you're, well, like, first of all, it's terrifying. Yes. It's terrifying. You should be afraid to, to think To find that. your, like, self thinking yes. that. Um, but also, like, you're putting a lot of pressure on the fact that, like, you're the person that has to hold this thing up yeah. when, like, you never created it anyway. Right. You never made any of it happen to begin with. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's not my gospel. It's not my church. Mm-hmm. It's not my discipleship program. Yeah. And I just have to be whatever part of it God gives me in mm-hmm. it, be faithful with that. Yeah. And there is a lot of, like, freedom that comes in yes. that as well. 
Yes. And then you don't have to be like as scared that God's going to like chop you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to find trouble. Right. <laughs> like, I don't need to go looking for it. It finds me plenty. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. But this idea of us being, because we can think, you know, oh, I'm such a good, I'm such a good disciple mm -hmm. as though God's impressed with us somehow mm -hmm. when the reality is, yes, you might be doing a few things that are good in the midst of it. We're all so fraught with sin mm -hmm. that are you really that good of a disciple? <laughs> right. Well, and I think that's like what's hard to walk to is it's like, okay, like, am, is there fruit in my life? Am mm -hmm. I like, you know, like being what I'm called to be? And you want to like check your life for that. So then if you are, you're like, okay, good. But then you have to be like, but it's only because of the Lord, you know, yeah. like you kind of have to walk yourself through that because in ourselves, like it's going to be natural to just be like, okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Good job, Lindsay. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> but like, all the glory has to go to him because if we're even doing anything good, like it's only because he's giving us the power right. and discipline to do it right. through his Holy Spirit, right. not because we can do anything. Right. I mean, it's way. like God has given you an amazing voice for you to walk around and be like, I'm such a good singer. Mm -hmm. It's like, but you didn't, you didn't give that to yourself. Right. So and I, I could be gone. It could be gone. Right. It, I haven't sang today. I, it could be gone. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but like, that's yes. literally it. Athletes, teachers, yeah. people gifted intellectually or that make scientific discoveries, mm -hmm. which are amazing. God gave you that capacity to do that mm -hmm. to begin with. So how are you taking credit for something that you didn't even create yourself to be? Right. Well, and I think often we can think certain, um, like, well, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to get it out. Like, they've been given this gift. And there's no, like, gift or ability or something you're accomplishing for the kingdom that's better than yes. what somebody else is accomplishing for yeah. the kingdom. Like, just because maybe I stand on a stage and sing and people see it and recognize mm -hmm. it, that's not better than somebody that sits in a basement and prays on a Wednesday night right. for the church and for the leadership. Like, it's we're all unworthy slaves. Yes. There's no like more worthy or like, oh, they have a higher calling in that. Like we're yes. all unworthy slaves, no matter where you're serving, no matter who you're serving. Mm -hmm. It's all the same. And the only measure of a good slave is one that is obe being obedient to the master. Mm -hmm. So you being obedient looks like getting on a stage and singing. Mm -hmm. Someone else being obedient looks like changing diapers in the mm -hmm. nursery. For someone else, they're running a parking crew. For someone else, they're you know, traveling the world, preaching the gospel, or just, you know, taking care of a bunch of kids at daycare or mm -hmm. taking care of your own kids in a house. I right. mean, what does obedience look like? And there are different seasons, I think, that God pulls you out in and out of obscurity, maybe. But are we as faithful in every single place because we realize we're serving him, again, mm -hmm. not ourselves, but mm -hmm. we're serving him, we're obeying, and we're doing the things that he's asked us to every single day. Right. So that really is the measure of, of being, if you want to say, a worthy slave. I mean, we're never like merit what he's done yeah but we can look at things especially in the christian community in the church and say okay if you're serving in a way that's visible you're then a worthy slave you're a right. good disciple because i see you show up at church every sunday you're you never miss a day greeting at the door you're giving your money you're right. these things but it's also possible that maybe the lord asked you to step away from serving for a season because it's so insane and he wants you to invest somewhere else maybe you're caring for a, a sick parent or whatever the case mm -hmm, may be, mm -hmm. but you're like, no, 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 I'm going to stay here greeting at the door because this is part of my work. Well, you you really aren't, even though we might look and be like, oh, she's so faithful. But you're not doing are you really? you're supposed to be. Because the master didn't ask you to do that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I know for me, like it can be, especially when trial or something difficult comes up, that's when it shows, like if you think that God is indebted to you for what you've been doing mm -hmm. for him. I think when you know, you're, you know, you're in everyday life, you're just doing your thing, you're trying to serve the Lord and be faithful to what he's called you to. And then something like happens, something that's difficult, something that's hard, you're walking through something hard. And you're kind of like in your heart, like, okay, like, <laughs> and I just think of that verse in Job, like, should we accept blessing from the mm -hmm. Lord and not adversity? And you, we kind of like maybe wouldn't say it out loud, but we think like, well, God kind of owes me. Like, yeah. I didn't deserve this. Look at my like, track record. Yeah, <laughs> like I've been so faithful. Like I've been doing what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to like, you know, 
spend time with you, you know, whatever it is we mm-hmm. think we're supposed to be doing. And then we come up against some type of opposition or something is difficult or God didn't answer a prayer like we wanted him to. And it really is like, well, what the heck? Like, why have I been doing all this stuff? You mm-hmm. know, and not or, that we would even say that out loud, but like in our heart, it's there. Yeah. Or you're looking at someone else like, well, they're totally sinful and they seem blessed. Yeah. Like, like the they're world? not walking through this. And like, I'm so obedient and I don't feel blessed. Yeah, What's going on? Exactly. Like we think that we've like built up some type of like, um, I don't know, like a account we can credit. cash in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like to God, like, okay, well, I shouldn't be going through this because I've been doing all these things. And that's just yeah. not how it works. As though we're safeguarding our life from trial through our obedience. A hundred percent. I'm obedient enough. And so now I'm safe. But, but as unworthy slaves, am I as surrendered and submitted to the trial? Right. Even if we don't like it, it's okay to be like, I don't really like this. But if you have me walking through this, I'll walk through it. Yeah. If this is what the master asked you to do, Mm -hmm. then are you still going to do it with gratitude and humility? And I'm saying that. And in my heart, I'm like, no. So please don't. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I am saying this to myself. I'm not. (laughs) When I say you, I mean, like, Lindsay, are you? Because it's so difficult. It's hard. It is so difficult to, you know, sometimes you just walk through something like, I'll just get through it, whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm still mad. But <laughs> if we could really like, again, remember our position before the king, mm. like remember that we are so indebted to the Lord, like right. we owe him everything. We are his. Yeah. So do what he's called you to do. Yes. It's so hard to remember in those difficult times, especially. And I don't think... I think the unworthy slaves part is meant to put it into perspective, our position with him and our inability to earn Mm -hmm. salvation, to earn grace, to earn mercy. I don't believe that it's in here for us to walk around like, oh, I'm just, I'm just unworthy. Like a, like, you know, that, because that really is a false humility in a different kind of a way. Mm -hmm. We should be confident in our position before the king. We are his. We are bought with a price. We are loved. We are loved. Yeah. Yes. Blessed. Mm -hmm. All the things. Abundant life. But at the same time, understand, caring with that and understanding of there is nothing that I could do. There is no amount that I could pay. There is no service that I could render that would ever earn in any way, ever repay what he has done for me on the cross. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, I'm an unworthy slave. And if you can recognize that position of my inability to do anything for myself to save myself to redeem myself and then understand his love on the cross and what Mm -hmm. he did that is even more humbling to realize you know amazing grace says you saved a wretch like me Mm -hmm. to and and some people can be even offended at that line it's like no no he saved a wretch like me i was such a mess i was unredeemable i was unable to do anything for myself and yet being an enemy of the cross Mm -hmm. he died on my behalf like what a savior yeah and when we remember those things that's what inspires the gratitude yes like if to be humble without gratitude is just you know what is that even like you Mm -hmm. said it's a false humility or it's um like some type of shame i would say yes like neither of those is right like we should be humble with gratitude Mm -hmm. to who god is and to what he's done Mm -hmm. and i think that keeps us it helps safeguard us from pride you really need to be actively in the fight against pride because we all have Mm -hmm. it it infects all of us but to recognize your position as an unworthy slave and understand what the Lord has done and then what he empowers you to do when he puts you into service really does keep you from it, – it helps safeguard you from arrogance. I'm not going to say that it, you, it can't yeah. infect you. But it, when people come up to you and say something nice or kind about how maybe you've impacted their life or whatever, I know, praise God, because – if not for the Lord, you know, we both have done plenty of work in the jail. And I would go up there and think, but for the grace of God, like <laughs> literally I could be sitting in here with you. Right. you know? And I know that about myself. I'm not even being crazy or, mm-hmm. you know, this is not an exaggeration. Right. Like you, you give me the right situation. And some of those girls, I'm like, mm, I see what you did there. You know? <laughs> right. like, I get it. Yeah. You know, so it really is like I can hear y- people say things that are kind. Hey. Thanks for doing this and thanks for faithfulness or whatever. Like, praise God. It really, truly is genuinely the grace of God that keeps me in this fight, that empowers me to do it, that enables me to be a disciple, that has given me any gifting at all. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I'm very, very clear on that because I'm just an unworthy slave that he's redeemed. Yeah. Well, and then we have to ask ourselves, like, if that is not where we're at, Mm -hmm. then what 
are we seeking in our service to the Lord? Mm -hmm. Is it to the Lord at all? Yeah. You know, what is it for us? Is it for people to tell us we did a good job? Mm -hmm. Is it for us to feel good about ourselves or to gain some type of like position or power? Like what is our motivation in doing the things that are serving the Lord? Mm -hmm. Because even if, like you said, they might look like they're serving the Lord, but if our heart is not right in that, then it's not really serving the Lord at all, it's serving ourselves. Yeah. And I'm going to say this. Here's a big statement that I haven't thought through, but I'm going to say anyways. <laughs> if it is not truly to the Lord, I don't think you'll stick it out because mm. it's not enough to have the praise of man. It's not enough to gain influence. Like all those things, eventually, if it's really not about the service to the king, those things aren't enough to keep you on the straight and narrow yeah. because – this fight is so hard. Yeah. <laughs> the, being called of the Lord to do things is so hard. Mm -hmm. And there, if, if you come back to why am I doing this and the answer isn't because the master commanded me and I'm his slave and so I do what he tells me to do, period, mm -hmm. you'll pl find plenty of reasons to not. Yeah. Because you're going to run into a situation where you have served in some capacity and somebody wasn't grateful that you were there. They didn't say thank you. Or you seem to get passed over for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Or you didn't get influence. Yeah. Or it didn't turn out how you thought it was going to turn out. And then the temptation is, our natural inclination is, well, pff, I don't need this. Yeah. I don't need this in my life. I'm mm -hmm. walking away from it. And then we do, but then the the very obvious conclusion to draw is you were only there for yourself anyway. You were yeah. there for the thank you. You were there for the position. You were there because you thought this might get you somewhere else or might make you a good disciple in mm -hmm. some way, gain you reputation. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really for the Lord anyways. Right. Well, I think the truth of it is a lot of times when it's something that is for the Lord, a lot of times it's really difficult anyway. Like God doesn't necessarily call us to easy things. Like, sure, yeah. there are good things that he calls us to and things that we can enjoy. Like, I love getting to do what I do, mm -hmm. but there are hard things in it where sometimes yeah. I'm just like, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know? When you're envying the garbage man, like, that's an indication <laughs> that this is yeah, difficult. <laughs> exactly. Thank you if you do garbage. We appreciate you. Yes, not, but it's a hard job. It's a hard job. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, I think a lot, yeah, God calls us to hard things. And so... Yeah. Maybe if it's all sunshine and butterflies, maybe it isn't for the Lord yes. either. I don't know. No. I mean, you look at <laughs> Paul. You look at the disciples. You look at some of the things that they went through. Daniel's in the lion's den, the yeah. boys in the furnace. I mean, you pick the story. We love to pick the shining moment, but mm -hmm. you need to look at the whole picture of it and the, the trial in it. And that's not to scare anybody, but we – life is hard. Mm -hmm. You might as well – but to me, I'm like, yeah, life is hard, but I'd rather do this – redeemed and walking with the Lord because at least I have peace and yeah. blessing and abundant life in the midst of it because you're going to have sure. difficult things no matter what. So I'm going to do it with Jesus. Yeah. But but as unworthy slaves, it, we have to purify our motives for things and make sure that we're really doing this for the Lord, mm -hmm. that really because we recognize our position, that he has asked us to do certain things because often, like you said, they're not hard. He's asking us to be patient when we feel impatient. He's asking us to be angry and not sin. Mm -hmm. He's asking us to forgive when we've been wronged or betrayed or when we're bitter. I mean, these are difficult things that we can only do through the Lord. And these are things that we're called to. Mm -hmm. And we only care to do them if we care about honoring the one that has issued the command. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm just taking that all in. <clears throat> yeah. And there is reward. Praise God. He's so gracious. There is reward. we don't deserve it. <laughs> we are unworthy slaves, mm -hmm. but he's still like well mm -hmm. and not even eternally he takes care of us here and now mm -hmm. just as the master you know in scripture was taking care of his slaves that would live with him and mm -hmm. he, all i've needed his hand has provided mm -hmm. you know like god cares for me here and he cares for me in eternity and he is providing for me now and i will reap the reward of following him eventually yes in eternity yes and like he doesn't have to do that no <laughs> no, he does not owe us anything. No. He does not. No. And I love, Char uh, Charles Spurgeon said, what we have we done for Christ compared with what he's done for us? Our service put besides Christ is like one single grain of dust in comparison with the mighty orb of the sun. Mm. And that's what he's done for us on earth. Right. So then to have already done this completed work of life on the cross, or his death on the cross that redeemed us from our sin, that grants us eternity, and then also give us reward on top of that mm -hmm. is 
I it's hard to even yeah. comprehend. Well, I I don't know if this kind of goes with it, but the, I was just thinking about how the scripture talks about the Holy Spirit is a deposit, and thinking mm. about like what we have now from the Lord here on earth is just like a deposit mm. on like all the reward that's coming yeah. when we get to be in eternity with Him, and yeah, like how gracious is God so to do gracious. that <laughs> when. You know, we are unworthy slaves and we should be doing what he calls us to, but most of the time we're not doing that anyway. And he's gracious and kind to like continually bring us back and allow us to try again. Yes. <laughs> and, you know? Um, and yeah. then, so in this story, initially it talks about he, the slave had worked in the field yeah. and then he comes in and the master's like, okay, now it's time for dinner and serve me. But there's this amazing part in Luke 12 that talks about in eternity in Luke 12, 37 it says blessed are those slaves whom the master will find on the alert when he comes so if, mm -hmm. if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing when he comes back truly i say to you that he will gird himself to serve and have them recline at the table and will come up and wait on them wow the master becomes the servant yeah. in eternity i mean i i it's hard to yeah. even i was just i just <laughs> thought like jesus is so much better than so us so much better than us he just is like you read something like that and you're just like there's no reason that he should ever even think he needed to do that but he's so humble and he's so loving and kind and i mean if i it would be blessing upon blessing if i could just be granted entrance into heaven and never see his face mm -hmm. like you get to live in this perfect place and just be here yeah. and no we get in we get to see his face and then he serves us is yeah mind-boggling yeah and i have a long way to go on being a better servant i guess <laughs> <laughs> Me too, because I wouldn't want to do that, and Jesus is going to do it. No, it's couch time. Yeah. <laughs> so true. So true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. That verse is like, really, that's amazing. And just gives you, I know you read verses like that, and that's when you just like really get a glimpse of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, like we read the stories about him, and sometimes we get used to him, and yeah, Jesus did this, yeah. and Jesus did this. But when you read something like that, you just really see the heart of who Jesus is, mm -hmm. and wow, it's challenging and convicting. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I know. I was reading that thinking I could serve people better. Yeah. You know, even just in my home, I know I could serve my husband better. I could serve my kids better. Yeah, I could serve my husband better. All of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're convicted. We need to we're shut it down. We're still unworthy slaves. In case you're wondering, <laughs> we're still walking unworthy, slave. unworthy yeah. slaves. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, that's. I think we just leave it there. Read Luke twelve thirty seven again mm -hmm. um, when you're done watching this, and let the Lord just kind of show Himself to you in that what His heart is, who He is. Um, he is worthy and we are not, and we have to keep ourselves in that place. Um, so I hope that this was a challenge to you. I know it was to me. Um, we will see you next month, but until then, walk worthy.